Well, hello, real life. So, today it's putting a little bit of a cramp in our normal work schedule because you can just start to feel the weather changing, but we're supposed to get some super gnarly, like 60, 70 mile an hour straight line winds today. And so we're gonna go hang out at <laughs> Leslie's mom's house because this thing rocks when it's that windy. And there's also some tornado warnings and some stuff. So eh, just to play it safe, we're gonna go ahead and probably pull the slides in, pull the antennas down and pack it up for the day. So hopefully uh, it passes by two or three o'clock this afternoon and we can still do our live stream and stuff because it's Thursday. So um, yeah, <laughs> we'll just see what happens, I guess. So a very real question would be, if you had to pack everything up that was important to you and leave with the possibility of coming back and your life being gone, you know, that's sort of a morbid question, uh, but what would you take with you? Um, that's an interesting one, right? Like, so I basically got it sorted. Um, my RC cars, I know that sounds stupid, but RC cars, my favorite guitar, which is my McPherson, all those other ones I can replace very easily that actually only have the other two, the gold, the Shoreline Gold Esquire that we just built. I can replace that super easy. We don't have any customer guitars, so I'm, I would take those, but I don't have any with me. Um, are safe with, and all my camera equipment, hard drives, and computer, because that's my whole livelihood is, all of that even though the pickup parts and all that stuff is super easily replaceable but you know when you have I don't know 10 grand worth of like camera stuff and that leads to my livelihood I could replace pickup parts in like 24 hours it's no big deal so anyway it's just a weird thing to think about because we've not had to deal with any kind of you know, hopefully you never do. I've lived in, I lived in Flagstaff, uh, Arizona, where I had to deal with being ready to evacuate for forest fires. Um, we never had to worry about hurricanes and I never cared about tornadoes when we had a house, but <laughs> a little different. Uh, well, it is three o'clock, four, three o'clock, something like that. And we're home. Uh, beautiful, sunny weather. It's a little breezy. Uh, but it was never windy, never rained a drop, not one tornado, uh, no real reason. Okay, so yeah, it, it's a little breezy, but no real reason to uh, be alarmed. So thank you, local weatherman. They canceled school, like seriously. Anyway, let's do a live. All right, so this morning, uh, since we survived the storm, um, we are gonna do an interesting thing. So somebody challenged me in a comment of a video uh, the other day about this whole putting a plate on the bottom of Stratocaster thing. It doesn't actually make that much difference. It's more about the coil dimension. And he was trying to argue that putting a steel plate on the bottom of the pickup doesn't, doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference to the inductance, therefore it won't make much difference to the tone. I don't know, maybe he just thought it was a psychosomatic thing that Leo Fender came up with for no reason. I'm not really sure. And he was saying that it's all down to the coil dimension. Um, if the coil dimension is different, then the inductance changes and therefore it sounds different. But if you put a steel plate on the bottom, it does nothing. Which I know is 100% false. And so he challenged me to put it into a video. Um, I don't have a tele bridge pickup to test it with. So we're gonna get into some particulars here why the numbers are a little off from what I said in my comments, but we'll get to it in a minute. So I've got my um, LC meter here. Put this thing on, put this thing on 20 Henry's. He was saying that you could only get like very small um, Milla Henry's difference. But I'm getting like a lot different. 
All right, so this thing is 2.5 Henry's, okay? All right, so here, we're just gonna take the camera. I'm just gonna do this manual. So 2.5 Henry's, okay? Now when we put this plate on the magnets, it doesn't matter which end, it doesn't matter which end. So we're just gonna flop them on top. So 2.5 Henry's, right? Watch what happens to the meter when I just click this on top. It goes to 264, okay? So that doesn't seem like a lot. However, it's proportionate. So he was saying it's only down to the size of the coil. If we did this with a bigger coil, this is the only coil I have available to do this test right now. Maybe next week when we're doing some videos, I'll throw it in next week's blog to do it on an actual bridge pickup of a telly, which actually isn't that much bigger than this. But the bigger the coil is, the more, more or less proportionately more it's gonna have. I have seen just doing that up to 0 0.7, uh, 700 millihenries. I have seen 700, this is what, 264 uh, minus 51, so this is 20, 23, 0.23, okay. Is that enough to make a difference in the tone of the guitar? Totally it is, totally. Um, that's the difference between going from more than the neck pickup to the bridge pickup. That's, that's a big difference. And the thing is, is this has more to do, uh, how do I explain it? The shape of the magnetic field changes. So instead of just being a normal north to south like this, it turns into a fat where the inductance happens in the coil changes, um, which is, a, excuse me, which is a big difference too. So the whole thing makes a difference. To say that putting a metal plate on the bottom of a single coil doesn't do anything, oh my word. Anyway, I just wanted to share that um, and put some numbers to it, it's kind of cool. It's colder out here than I thought. I'm gonna go grab a jacket and then what we're gonna do is we're going to take the gloss off this neck on this telly. I'm gonna show you how I do that and come up with good results every time. And then we're gonna do a new segment that I call Don't Be That Guy. I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we got that mess out of the way, now we're going to get into how I take the gloss off of this neck. So I put that post on fit on YouTube because I don't actually like a shiny neck. So here's what we're gonna do. This works awesome. Uh, I got a spray bottle. I got some 600 grit. 600 is my favorite. Um, maybe finish with 800. I don't know that I have any 800, so we're just gonna go with 600 and see what happens. Um, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I think I use 800 actually. Uh, and then what I do is where the little, this little right here is, and right here, this is kind of where I taper it off. So basically we're just going to spray our paper. I don't spray the guitar, I spray the paper. And we're just gonna sand it. What I like about 600 is it doesn't bite all the way through. It doesn't make a mess of the finish. You can almost barely see that you're doing anything. Kind of come up to this taper. Here. You see how that white stuff is building up? That just means that clear coat. Now this is a urethane finished guitar. Um, if it's a nitro finished guitar, you gotta be a little more careful and you gotta really make sure that it's not fresh. Fresh nitro doesn't like to sand very well. And we're not gonna go all the way through the finish. We're just taking the gloss off. And then what I like to do is right where your thumb, I'll be in 
see that right where your thumb goes right up here but don't kiss the edge because you'll go through the edge of the finish up there and then work your way down the neck down to here I'm not spending very much time flip it over Give my paper one more squirt. I mean, the guitar's fully assembled. Like, I'm not flipping out about this. Now, on the bottom, I like to go up a little bit higher. Don't kiss the finish on your, on your guitar. That way, the edge of the fretboard is up here in the money, money area. Come down here, right about where your hand is gonna Kind of come up into this area when you play. Back of the heel right, or back of the peg head. Now you can put a piece of tape on here and make a nice hard line. I don't like hard lines. I like it to be a little softer looking. It doesn't, you don't notice it as much. And see where there might be any unevenness of gloss. Because I want this to look nice matte finish. Nice and uniform. So we've got a little spot right in here. Now I've done this a million times. I do this on almost every one of my glossy necks. In fact, I do this on all of my custom builds too. Um, finish it with finish it with uh, six or eight hundred wet dry. So I've been doing this a long time. If you are squeamish about doing it. Just go in smaller chunks, you know? Just do a little bit. And I'm holding the guitar funny because I'm trying to see it in the light. The whole thing's already soft enough, smooth enough. I'm just trying to go for the proper aesthetic now because I don't want it to look like I sanded the back of my guitar. Like, I want it to look kind of factory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we need to still, I think I'm going to take the strings off of it and we're going to roll the edges. Maybe we'll do that in our next vlog. Because these edges are pretty square, a little bit sharp. So maybe we'll roll the edge of this fretboard a little bit too. So if you've been catching the live streams, you know about the Grey Guitar Build Off and the fact that uh, I'm in it, which is <laughs> ridiculous still. Uh, super cool. Um, we talked about the charity, we talked about all that stuff. Uh, we have, I'm I think on Tuesday, the video that comes out is gonna be kind of a breakdown of what I'm basically gonna do. I've kind of gone back and forth whether I was gonna share this as a surprise or not at the end, but I think we just have to build it together. So um, I'm gonna at least show you what I'm going to attempt to do over the next few weeks. And uh, so that'll be on Tuesday. I think you're gonna dig it. It's crazy. Go look at all the other participants. Go look at some of our viewers uh, who are in our live streams all the time are participating. So make sure you go to greatguitarbuildoff.com and check it out um, because they're in there. And if you are participating, comment below. I want to know. Um, so cool, man. So check that out on Tuesday. Obviously, we have our live stream next Thursday and more stuff to come, I promise.